Sir, permission to leave the station. For what purpose, Master Chief? To give the Permanent back their bomb. Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Halo 2. Yeah, Halo 2. Currently in the midst of doing some Arbiter shenanigans. I can't believe they bring the quads back. Of all things, you know? What is it? That stench. What is it? I've that smelled stench. it before. I've what smelled is it happening? before. It's like an echo. Juggernaut. Alright, let me turn down the game audio. Beep, beep, boop. Bish, bash, bosh. Alright, cool. New level. Alright, then. I'll show you how it's done. Oh, whoa. What are these? Oh, they made the tank harder to see in. Oh, whoa. The atmosphere is better in this version because it's a lot darker. I don't like the look of that. I hear fighting, but I'm not there to do it. Yep, that's what I thought. It's the flood. As I kind of expected. So they went back to the remnants of Halo, I assume. And uh yeah, they found the flood. What happened here? Yeah, that's about them. You always have bad Do they need to give the elites such like dump trucks? What's happening here, dude? You good? I wonder who the prophets would say to silence me. An arbiter. Unflattered. He's using a hollow drone. He must be close. Come out, so we may kill you. <laughs> Get in line. <laughs> oh man. That's I like this guy more than I like the arbiter to be well, no, not more than I like the arbiter. Oh, it's go time. Sorry, everyone. Wow, cutting up infection forms doesn't even take batteries. By the looks of it, at least. That's weird. In, um... In Halo 1 Anniversary, uh, they make all these things look a little more like uh, the Halo 3 versions of the Flood. But here, well, no, they look like the Halo 3 versions and the updated version. So I assume that this version is meant to be taken as canon now as well. That's my guess. So... Dealing with the flood. I like that level. It's kind of it's kind of interesting. It's the opposite of um. It's like the equivalent of the uh, level where you play as chief and then you find the marines all fucked up, and then uh, from the point of view of the marines, you're like, what happened here? And and you and I'm stabbing here. Anyway, what I'm getting at is that it's pretty neat. Fuel Rod isn't a great weapon to fight, like, hand-to-hand -hand or fist-to-fist. -fist. Oh, 
It fires very fast, though. I didn't expect that. When you fire, like, a rocket launcher, it actually has almost, like, a little cooldown where it stops you from firing another rocket, which I don't remember being in the other games. Lead the target, Alfred. Lead the target. Oh, yeah, I can still do this. Or I can't. Yeah, so the, um, the, the ball of energy comes out of the gun. Like, it just kind of spit out. And then it accelerates. The manner of how it fires is kind of unique. I wonder if anyone actually had any Halo weddings. There used to be this show called uh, Arby and the Chief. And it was a crappy sort of machinima sort of puppet show involving um, Halo action figures that play Halo as though they're like people. Uh, and one of the jokes is that like the action figure of Master Chief sucks at Halo. And in fact, that was originally the only joke back in the olden days when uh, Machinima only had one joke uh, allotted to them. Unless, of course, you were uh, Red vs. Blue. Sentinel beams are probably really good here. I'll try to pick one up after I'm done with this. Um, probably wasn't a very good show, all things considered. But it was a it was a good early exposure for uh, of of Halo to me. So I've got to say it was kind of weird. There was a lot of uh, plot lines about like the plastic toys dating someone. Oh, that was a friend. Occupational hazard of working with me though. In video games, not in real life. In real life, I'll kill you on purpose, not mistake. Um, yeah, there are a lot of plot lines involving the Arbiter dating, like, a human woman, even though he was a plastic action figure. And there was a weird season that I don't think is canon where they all moved to L.A. and there were, like, other action figures from other... Uh... Oh, he's cute. You're going to die now. Um, yeah, other action figures, like Sonic and, and, uh, Mario, and, like, Mario was, like, Lotso from Toy Story 3, and it's kind of hard to TLDR. But anyway, uh, one episode consisted of, um, the, the gang ruining someone's wedding, because they decided to have it in Halo 3 for some reason. And, like, I know for a fact that World of Warcraft weddings have happened. Um, I don't know if there's any other... Beam to beam. See, I would want these beams to, like, meet in the middle, and I would have to, like, push them back and forth, like the ending of every Harry Potter movie. Also, for whatever stupid reason, there was also a whole season involving a different, um... Oh... Anyway, my point was is that I was just commenting on the oddity of having a, a wedding in Halo 3. Because Warcraft makes sense because there's a large social aspect to that game. Whereas uh, Halo 3 isn't. Anyway, um, since I'm going to just talk about Arby and the Chief now. Wow, I like the way they fall apart. That's fun. They even brought that over, the little giblets. So there was this whole uh, season about um, ruining someone's wedding. So the Arbiter's real girlfriend, he broke up with her because he was an action figure and she was a human and like their love can't be. And also it was an affront to God and man. 
Uh, and then she started dating and was going to marry some other guy who just kind of showed up. Uh, and it just so happened that he was uh, the director and designer and guy who did this other uh, first-person shooter series. And yet, for some reason, he still preferred to play Halo. Lead the target. Hmm. The little pitter-patter of their feet is pretty effectively scary, I think. Anyway, yeah, it was it was obvious that it was like a knock on Call of Duty. Because the, the guy who does Ar did Arby and the Chief has talked about how he didn't like Call of Duty in the past. Even using his show as a way to get that across. Hmm. What if I can... See, I can, but it isn't smart. Oh, man, I was right next to the end. Anyway, so because people can't just, you know, be dickheads, he was also, like, evil. And, uh... He was cheating on his girlfriend with another girl for some reason. And uh, for some reason, they elected to have these conversations through the Halo Reach voice chat. Um, because... Where is it? I lost you for a second there, bro. Yeah, for whatever reason... Um, well, the reason is because the, the cast has to hear and they're plastic action figures and can't go anywhere and can't overhear anything, per se. And yet, for whatever reason, not only does this game developer prefer to play another company's game, but... Oh, that makes sense. You just break the glass. Yeah, not only does this game developer prefer another company's game, but he also has his sex chats through them. And, like, he doesn't do it through the global chat, which, you know, I guess is the smart way to do it. Oh, God. Maybe I do remember this Sentinel meme. Come here. Yeah, he only has it so people that are near them can hear, and then so he and his girlfriend have to sneak off to a corner of a, of a Halo Reach map. So they can go, like, talk dirty to each other. Are those the heretics, or...? Yeah, those are heretics, guys. Don't you want to team up? We've got, we've got other problems. We've got bigger fish to fry. Nice. It's pretty clean. Oh, I love this thing. Like this this thing is eternal. This this is on a top like this is in my top three melee weapons in first person shooters. Shooters specifically. I, I do also include the machete from Far Cry 3 and something from Doom. I don't know what, though. You got a lot of pick. You got the sword, you got the chainsaw, you got a good old pair of fists. Anyway, so, um, because he's white knighting uh, his ex-girlfriend, Arbiter decides to destroy the wedding. So, uh, the, the two plastic action figures team up and get in contact with a group of hackers. Did I even talk about that? Like, yeah, this guy who owns a rival game franchise decides to have his wedding in Halo Reach. And it was being, like, documented on and, like, there was a, a, a television special or something about it where they're talking about the this... This fucking wedding, this giant cathedral that they were building, 
using the Halo Reach map editor. <laughs> and everyone was edited so they could only have plasma pistols and, you know, they did no damage. Uh, but... <laughs> Then for some reason there were also inexplicably like guards, like who who had working weapons in case people just started beating each other to death in the middle of this wedding. I think. So then um, they get in contact with this like gang of hackers who hack their accounts so that they can be guards and have weapons, and then they shoot up everyone at the wedding and and arbiter tells the girl that like her fiance is cheating on her that was the season where i almost quit but it got so dumb that i was like well at least the fight scene's going to be cool right and it was okay you know it was passable I'm probably supposed to be interacting with something, but I got distracted just talking about how dumb Arby and the Chief was. The season where I quit watching because it got too stupid was, um... After, uh, after their exploits made them famous, Arby and the Chief were selected to join this, like, guild of anti-hackers. Um... It was this hacking group called Chaos Theseosis. Which is a dope name, I will admit. But also... Really? <laughs> anyway, so they had hacked their account so that their pistol shots could like... Hold on, let me watch this. Your actions do not make sense. Oh, it's sparked. Proper protocol for a flood outbreak is to establish immediate infection reporting. Communications must be maintained with all local forces in order to track any spread of the parasite. There are no local forces, Oracle. For now, all you have is me. But I tracked multiple ships in orbit, including some remaining human presence. In light of the danger posed by the Flood, surely you can set aside this disagreement with the humans No! Anything still alive in orbit is our enemy. The humans have very good cause to kill us on sight. And the knowledge you've shared with me casts doubt on the entire purpose of our Covenant. If any of our ships remain above us, they are not the help you seek. But why would they not provide assistance? Because of this talk of prophecies and journeys? I learned a small amount about your covenant before that reclaimer blew up my installation. But my understanding is incomplete. The AI I encountered on board one of your ships was less than forthcoming. What you need to know, Oracle, is that thousands of years ago, at the founding of our great covenant, a bargain was struck between the prophets and the elites. A bargain which I fear will be the end of us. Interesting. Let me turn that back down. I'll talk about that in a sec, but... First, I must figure out where I am going and what I am doing. Should I have not jumped down? Maybe that was my error. <laughs> Fuck. Well, I hope that wasn't my error, because I don't seem to have a way to get back up. Anyway, yeah, the leader was, um, this, like, guy who... The leader of Chaos Theseosis, I mean. Not a stupid name at all, shut up. He was this guy who had, like, a voice modulator on. Maybe this will make it a little more clear. I thought maybe it was, like, a Metroid thing. Forgive me. Yeah, it was this it was this kid with a fucking voice mod. Honey? Oh, we got dudes. It's because my crew's dead or something? 
Oh, there they go. I don't know why the door didn't open. Okay, just a regular kid with a voice mod. And he, he gave this big, like, almost anonymous-like speech. Like, the hacking, the hacktivist group anonymous. About how, um... You know, he and his group would frag. Frag is just old, uh, old PC game slang for killing someone. But yeah, their pistols could frag and ban everyone. Ignore how that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, so these guys, like... It was like a weird case, because normally, like, death in a video game is like, Oh no, and then he comes back. Okay. Sorry, I need to focus. I'm getting distracted about how dumb Halo uh, RB and the Chief got. So yeah, um, in Halo, in Halo Reach multiplayer, you know, you can't have a thing like permadeath. That just isn't what happens. That's not how it works. Uh, so they added permadeath because the, the pistols would frag and ban you from Xbox Live. Oh no, I guess. Now I don't have to deal with people calling me racial slurs. Like, it it helps give you, like, a better opinion of the, of the rider, where, like... Season, like, what, six or seven is about, uh... The, the, the one guy who's in charge of Call of Duty, you know, because there is one guy in charge of Call of Duty. Uh, marrying his girlfriend, and he white knights in there and saves her. And then, uh, in season seven or eight, like, you getting banned from Xbox Live is a fate worse than death. Like, getting banned from Xbox Live is this pit from which you will never recover from. It's impossible. You can't... You will die. <laughs> this will save me from the storm, but you will be consumed. That was when I quit watching it, because it got Robert, really stupid. Where is he? The stinking floodbane boxed himself in tight. We'll never break through this. Then we shall force him out. How? The cable. I'm going to cut it. Get everyone back to the ships. Return to the landing zone. Radical. The Arbiter will continue Radical. So the Arbiter, um, I guess, has a has a knack similar to Chief. <laughs> Is it that easy? The Arbiter has a knack similar to Chief of like. Well, let's just think of something dumb and then do it, you know? Like, hey, I'm going to fly through space and shoot the bomb back to the coveys, you know? I'm going to blow up something a couple hundred times the size of Earth. They've got swords, huh? Like, you have to worry about it a little bit, because, like, you can just go sailing with this. So, um, I wanted to talk about the Arbiter's armor. So, this armor is a couple hundred years old, which means a couple of, well, it could mean a couple of things. God damn it, not again. I could just not hit him with the sword, but then I wouldn't be using the sword. And you know what? I don't know if I'm ready for that. Um... But the Arbiter's armor is a couple hundred years old. But it's almost as good as everyone else's, just with a shitty stealth. Which implies a couple of things about uh, the Covenant's technology. Uh, and specifically, the Covenant under the Elites. Or the Elites under the Covenants. Um, 
so it could be possible that there's technological stagnation. Because the Covenant don't want the Elites to get too advanced, because then the Elites could have an edge on them. Um, or the Elites could have gotten so religiously dogmatic that they've technologically stagnated themselves. Hello, darling. So yeah, they could have technologically stagnated on their own, or it could be something that the... that everyone's making them do. Uh, but if you're watching this in order of, of, like, every Halo game, then you'll have already seen that there's been a schism between Elites and the Covenant. Because we see that happen in ODST. I'm guessing the cable is still up further. I'm not sure where it wants me to go yet. Huh. So it could be like societal stagnation or technological. Since they also have so something of like a feudal culture, they're based off of like knights and samurai and other uh, other contemporaries of the like. There was just a thing. Here. Oh, you pick it up. That's where it went. Okay, is it this? Oh, here we go. Oh, nice. Perfect. That makes sense. Okay. It's being a little... D oh, it even leans. It l That's so cool. <laughs> Indeed, look at it list. Oh man, it's really creaking. That's a fantastic detail. I love that. One final cable officer. I love the idea of, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, I'm just going up here. I'm not really in control of myself too much. Shit, this might be too far to fall. Yeah, I thought so. Um, I love the idea of ancient relics that are technological weapons. Like in the first KOTOR you find Baka's blade. And it's a vibrating, like, energy katana. It's a powered katana. It's a piece of machinery. It's, like, it's a katana, yes. It is a sword, you know. It is this ancient ceremonial blade. But also, it is powered by electricity to, to fuel things. You know, it, it's, it's not worthless. It's not just this piece of metal. It is, in fact... this, like, <laughs> ancient vibro-sword, uh, you know, based off of the idea that if you vibrate a blade, it can cut through things better, but it's an ancient version of one of those, which is just kind of silly, but I love. And, like, I hate the, I hate Dagobah so much, like, Dagobah is probably the worst part of KOTOR. Yeah, Dagobah might be the... No, no, it's not Dagobah, sorry. Dagobah's where Yoda lives. It's a uh, Kashyyyk. Kashyyyk is the, the Wookiee home planet. 
Sorry, I got confused with one swamp planet for the other swamp planet. So, um... What now, huh? I'm not really sure on what to do, seeing as I'm plummeting to my death. Wait, do I just ride the elevator down? Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, the implication that um, old stuff is even better would give credence to the idea that the Covenant is like, oh, here's your new armor, you know? Here's your new the shit. And it's actually oh, crap. I like sliced through that grenade. That was awesome. So I also wanted to talk about that um the heretic here is totally right. Uh the the covenant is conning everyone. Because with the covenant, like and by covenant what I what I mean is specifically the prophets. What their plan is is to turn on the rings, and that's what the Great Journey is, you know? They want to turn on the rings and extinguish all sapient life, except for maybe themselves. Because it's like, it's their, it's part of their religion. Let's turn this up. Get in. Come on, do it. Yes. Oh, it's playtime. Oh, yeah, there was a scarab. We saw that. Oh, that was kind of weird. Okay, I'll turn it back up. That's the cutscene from, from one. Pull up, we won't make it. We'll make it. And then the Banshee crashes. And then the player character puts their arm up over the ledge. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the we'll make it cutscene. We saw that twice, in fact. Okay. I love going on sword rampages. Like, the elites with the sword is cool, but honestly, the sword, I think, always looks the coolest in the hands of- what the hell happened? I think the sword looks the coolest in the hands of Chief. You know? It's, uh, it's something to be said for, uh, specifically designing your characters around the weapons, or vice versa. Because, like, Chief has a very specific silhouette, you know? He strikes a very, very specific figure. And while he is clearly, you know, he's a space marine, he's wearing power armor. You know, he looks like other guys in power armor. And he's wearing the most... We talked about this, but we, he, Chief is actually wearing the most generic default set of Mjolnir. And Mjolnir's the default. And so while his armor is somewhat customized, it's not special or unique in any way. It's just the... It's just completely normal gear. Madly clicking? What happened there? Oh my god, I gotta turn around. Excuse me, everyone. Excuse me, you three? The pop is what's killing me. Weird. Okay, here we go. So let's clear you guys out. And then we head this way, okay. 
Sorry, everyone. I'm getting distracted and stupid. But yeah, like, say, say you have a... Because Chief, for all his genericness, does strike a very specific figure. And I've talked about how his character and his persona are some of the other things that are unique about him, despite being kind of boring. Like, how he enjoys to follow orders. And Arbiter's honestly much the same way. But yeah, if you're if you're designing a character and they can have more than one weapon it can be good to design every weapon around that character you know like how good does chief look holding the sword does it look as sweet as it possibly could no okay change the sword of course this only works whenever you have like an essentially perfected design So, like, it requires you to have such a good character design that, like, you're like, we're going to rock with this forever. And, like, Chief has the, the bubble helmet in in Halo 1. Oh, Jesus, those are plasma coils. Yeah, Chief has that big bubble helmet in Halo 1. And, like, they have it most of the way. And then he gets this helmet, which is, I think, Mjolnir 6. And he rocks with that for the rest of the trilogy. And his, uh, the Mjolnir, I think, 7 he gets in Halo 4. I don't know where he gets it, because of reasons. But yeah, the Mjolnir 7 that he gets is very similar to the 6. Because, like, they know that the design is nearly perfect where it is. You can leave it alone. You don't need to play with it anymore. It's just, it, it's good where it is, you know? Leave it where it lies. Is this... See, I asked if that was a pet, and I didn't get an answer quick enough. By which I mean, you know, before I finished falling. Okay, those lead to pets, yeah. That we've established. But yeah, Chief's, Chief's design is honestly just, like, so sublime. That, like, I don't think that they should ever change it. I don't really think they'll need to. One way or another, you know. And it's why, like, the default Noble Six um, and Spartan Lock just don't look as good. Because they have to be counterparts to Chief. Damn, heretic. But to change Chief's design is... Arbiter. Well, I would rather heretic. die by your hand. Let the prophets lead me to slaughter. Who has taught you these lies? The Oracle. Hello, I am 343 Guilty Spark. I am the monitor of Installation 04. Ask the Oracle about Halo. How they would sacrifice us all for nothing. This is cool. More questions? Splendid. I would be happy to assist you. The elites are blind, Arbiter, but I will make them see. What? Oh shit, that's what's happening. So yeah, honestly, one of the things about, um... Halo and and the way that the Covenant's, like, use of it. Because we talked about how um, the Prophets, you know, those, those big fat guys in the chairs, they are essentially conning the elites. And to an extent, everyone. You know, they are tricking them. They are fucking them over. And I'm out of all my good weapons ammo. And, like, they give me a little bit, but... Hmm. 
Jeez, Pete. Excuse me, everyone. Hey, honey. What the hell? <laughs> okay, let's find that. Give me the sword, give me the sword. But yeah, like, the, the con that the prophets are doing is so interesting. I, oh, that was easy. And I like the idea that someone will see through it and that they'll be like, oh, huh. choice will go. This heretic imperiled the great journey. Oracle, great journey. Why do you think there's insist on being something that we're That is the Oracle. Come, you're leaving the system. Okay, Delta Halo, huh? Okay, um, I'm going to stop it here. Um, honestly, the uh, Halo 2 levels are pretty good at letting me just stop at the end of them. It's a lot more like Reach. Uh, pause it. Excuse me. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, I'm really enjoying this. This is uh, this is fantastic. I've, I've mentioned how much I missed out, and goddamn, that hasn't stopped being true or anything. Uh, Halo 2 is fantastic, and this port of it, this upscaled um, HD version, is even more so. Uh, this is great. Thank you all for watching this with me. Uh, I've been Alfred. This has been Halo 2. Technically the anniversary edition, but I'm seeing so much of the original that, well, you know. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Sir, permission to leave the station. For what purpose, Master Chief? To give up.